This session is on the review of financial mathematics, which is uh, which is covered both in module two and module three. In uh, module two, financial mathematics is involved in the valuation of bonds, and in module three, met financial mathematics will be applied to calculating net present value. Now, uh, first off, let's talk about uh, the future value of a single cash flow. So if today you have a, a cash flow, which is this PV sub zero, which you will invest today to earn an interest at a rate of R percent per period for a total of N periods. Okay, if, if this investment is kept there until N periods later, then the value at the end of year N will be uh, denoted by FV sub N which is equals to PV sub zero, the amount that you invested initially, multiplied by one plus R, the interest rate, to the power of N. Now take for example, let's calculate the future value of $100,000 invested at an interest rate of 8% per annum at the end of five years. Now, uh, showing the timeline here uh, from for five years, and assuming the hundred thousand dollars is invested today at a rate of eight percent, so the future value after five years will be hundred thousand multiplied by one plus zero point zero eight power five. Now, um, so the number that you will get will be hundred forty six thousand nine hundred thirty two point eight one dollar uh, uh, in dollars and cents. So this amount that you will get at the end of year five, assuming the interest rate stays at eight percent per annum. So this is based, uh, is based on the concept of compounding interest, where the interest that you get earns more interest. Now, uh, how would you calculate this number on your calculator? So at a minimum, you will need a scientific calculator to do this. So in this case, uh, you will enter 100,000. Uh, this is a calculator on your screen. You can, uh, if you normally it will be on the standard mode, but if you click the uh, menu button, you will see the scientific. This is what we'll be using. So click 100,000. You can uh, use your mouse or you can tap it on your keypad. Then we multiply by a bracket, open bracket, 1 plus 0 0.08, close bracket. Then uh, the power button is this x uh, power of y. Then press 5, then equals 2. Uh, the amount that we saw earlier, $146,933. So this is the amount that you will see uh, computed here. Okay, so that's how much uh, you will get at the end of year 5. So of course, uh, if you look at it from a other perspective, if you borrow money, uh, if you borrow 100000 for 5 years at a rate of 8%, at the end of year 5, you will have to pay back $146,933. Now, uh, on to the next part, it's, uh, we'll look at present value of a single cash flow. Now, what if we have a cash flow in the future, at time n, and we want to find the value of, this cash, of that cash flow today? So using the formula from the previous slide, we rearrange it. So the PV at time 0 is equal to the future value at time n, divided by 1 plus the interest rate r, to the power of n. So example two, let's calculate the present value of $10,000 at the end of six years, assuming an interest rate of 10% per annum. Now, to get the timeline, we have 10,000 at the end of uh, year six. Okay, so to, to find the value at time zero, we will take the future value 10,000, divide by one plus uh, 0 0.1 to the power of six. And that would give us $5,645. Okay, and that is the value at time zero. Or if you, uh, in another context, it also mean it could also be interpreted as um, you can invest five thousand six hundred and forty-five dollars today at a rate of ten percent per year, and you will get ten thousand dollars at the end of six years. Now, uh, how we use a calculator in this case? You press uh, click ten thousand, then uh, divide by open bracket 1 plus 0 0.1 close bracket power 
six equals to five thousand six hundred and forty five dollars okay right now for the next part we'll uh, look at future value of a series of cash flows then we will extend beyond a single cash flow that we saw in the first slide so when you have a series of cash flows that occur over different periods and you want to find the future value up to a certain point in the future it is the sum of the future value of each individual cash flow so take for example in this timeline i have a cash flow each in period one two up to period n and let's say if you are asked to calculate the future value of the cash flows at time n then what you will have to do is you will have to compound or uh, find the future value of every single cash flow up to period n so if you look at the formula for the first term we will take cash flow in period 1 multiplied by 1 plus r to the power of n minus 1 which is uh, in other words investing the first cash flow from period 1 to period n and for the second cash flow, we'll do the same thing. We'll invest it from period 2 to period n. So the difference in the time is n minus 2. And we will do this for every single cash flow up to the point uh, where we are calculating up to. So if you notice here that the last term is just the cash flow itself, because at that point in time, the cash flow will not be uh, reinvested to earn any interest. So in example 3, we'll calculate the future value at the end of year 3 for the following 3 cash flows. Uh, so in year 1, you have $200. In year 2, you have $400. And in year 3, we have $600. And we want to find out what is the future value of these 3 cash flows up to year 3. And we assume that the interest rate is 8% per annum. So what we'll do here, this is the working. okay? Uh, but we'll go through it each one by one. So we'll have so the future value at year three is two hundred dollars times one plus zero point zero eight to the power of two, plus four hundred dollars times one plus zero point zero eight to the power of one plus six hundred. So keep in mind that we want to find out what is the value of all these three cash flows up to year three. So looking at the first cash flow, two hundred dollars. So what happens here is that the first cash flow, two hundred dollars, will be invested at a rate of eight percent for two years up to year three. That will give us two hundred and thirty-three dollars and twenty-eight cents. Now, for the sec for the cash flow in year two, which is four hundred dollars, it will be invested from year two to year three for one year. Therefore, the power is one, at a rate of eight percent, and that would be four hundred and thirty-two dollars. Now, for the last cash flow, which is uh in year three itself, that six hundred dollars, that would not be invested. So there will still be $600 here, and the total will be $1,265.28. That is the future value of all these three cash flows at the end of year three. Next, we'll look at the present value of a series of cash flows. And uh, to find, if you have a series of cash flows, like C1, C2, C3, up to Cn, the present value of all these cash flows is the sum of the present value of each individual cash flow. So in example 4, calculate the present value of the following cash flows. So in year 1, you have $200. In year 2, you have $400. And year 3, we have $600. And we assume the interest rate is 10% per annum. And we want to find the value of these three cash flows today at time t equals to 0. And to do that, we will this uh show. I mean, we'll do the working as follow. So for the first cash flow two hundred dollars, we will discount it back two years, uh, sorry one year, at a rate of ten percent, which gives us hundred eighty one dollars and eighty two cents. And for the cash flow in year two four hundred dollars, we will discount it back by two years. That gives us three hundred thirty dollars and fifty eight cents. And for the cash, the final cash flow six hundred dollars, we will discount it back three years. And that gives us $450.79. And if we add up all the three figures here, we'll get $963.19. And that is the present value of the three cash flows. Next, we'll look at the present value of a perpetuity. Now, a perpetuity is a series of equal cash flows that goes on forever. And uh, in this timeline, uh, the equal cash flow is denoted as C and the timeline doesn't stop it goes up to infinity 
Now, uh, here we assume that the first cash flow occurs at the end of the first period. Of course, we could discount, we could find the present value of each individual cash flow, but to go up to infinity would uh, be quite uh, uh, tedious in terms of computation. But algebraically, it all simplifies to C over R, which is the equal cash flow divided by the interest rate. Now, example 5, let's say investor leases a parcel of land for equal annual payments of $20,000 per year forever, and the first payment is made at the end of year 1. Now, if the interest rate is 8% per annum, what is the present value of this perpetuity? Now, see, by using the formula, we could easily calculate this. This 20,000 divided by 8%, and it gives us 250,000. So, this tells us that the value of the land, or the value of all these payments to the investor is 250,000. So, if the investor was offered another option, which is to pay a lump sum upfront, the investor would be willing to pay two hundred and fifty thousand, okay, and it will give it the same. It will give the same value as this perpetuity. Now, in the last uh, section, we'll look at the present value of an annuity. So, an annuity is a series of equal cash flows occurring over n periods, and of course, um, in the uh, last few examples, we've seen a perpetuity where it is also a type of annuity. But of course, uh, for a perpetuity, uh, the, the annuity goes up to forever. Now, uh, for, for, this, uh, for this scenario, we will assume that the first cash flow ha occurs at the end of the first period. And this is what we normally call an ordinary annuity. Now, given the equal cash flows, okay, that starts in year one, and then goes up to year, uh, and it occurs in year two, three, four, up to period n. Okay, and the PV of all these cash flows, okay, uh, would be equals to this uh, expression C over R, multiplied by one minus one over one plus R to the power of n. And in some ways, uh, you will notice that C over R looks quite similar to the PV of the perpetuity that we saw earlier. Okay, but of course, this is uh, for a finite period. Now, look at example six here. So investor is considering an investment that pays an equal cash flow of $5,000 per year at the end of each uh, of the next 8 years. And given the interest rate is 10% per annum, calculate the present value of this annuity. So we have this $5,000 recurring for 8 years, starting from 1 year from now. So to calculate the PV, it will be 5000 which is the annuity amount, divided by the interest rate 10%, multiplied by 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 0 0.1 to the power of 8, and that gives us $26,674.63. That's the value of this investment to the investor. Next, we'll look at the present value of a growing perpetuity. And unlike the previous case, uh, he, uh, in the previous case, we assume that the cash flows are equal throughout the whole period. But for this case, we will assume that the cash flows actually grow at a constant rate forever. Now, uh, so in this timeline, we have the first cash flow that happens at the end of year one, and subsequently, that cash flow grows at a rate of g uh, constant rate of g percent per period, okay, forever. So in the next period, three, for example, it will be cash flow in year one times one plus g to the power of two, and it will grow at that rate forever. Now, of course, uh, to simplify things, uh, if you were to PV all these cash flows, it will be equals to C1, which is the cash flow next year, or in the next period, divided by R minus G, with R being the interest rate and G will be the constant growth rate. Now, example 7, let's say investor is considering an investment that pays a cash flow of $5,000 next year, which is in year 1, with subsequent payments increasing at a constant annual rate of 4% per annum forever. So this is a case of a growing perpetuity. So given the interest rate is 10% per annum, calculate the present value of this growing perpetuity. So take note that the first cash flow next year is $5,000. Okay, and the growth rate is 4%, the interest rate is 10%. So the in the following year, the in year 2, the cash flow would be 5,000 times 1.04, and in year 3, it will be 5,000 times 1.04 power of 2, and this goes on and on up to uh, perpetuate, uh, perpetuity. So to calculate the PV of this, we'll just take the next year's cash flow, which is 5,000, 
and we divide by R minus G. And that gives us $83,333.33. That's the present value of this uh, entire perpetuity.